Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel everyone. On the menu today, I have delicious Wingstop. And I did a poll and everybody voted, so this is what you guys wanted to see. So, here it is. And, we have uh, their voodoo fries right here. And it pretty much just has cheese and ranch on top with Parmesan. Um, yeah, and I got honey mustard, one, this is uh, blue cheese, and then a big ass thing of ranch. And then we got boneless original hot right here, and a bone-in traditional mango habanero. And then Louisiana bone-in traditional as well. So, and you know me, I just got my agua. And I'm so hungry, and I'm ready for this. So, let us pray, shall we? Thank you, Father, for this food. Bless this food and sanctify it by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And forgive me for being a drunk ass in my life the other night. I'm sorry I am a sinner. Always say your prayers. <laughs> you guys, raise your hand in the comment section below with an, a raise hand emoji if you were there for my drunk ass life. Please tell me you, oh God. Forgive me, you have to forgive the man behind the camera. I don't know who that was. Okay. Original hot. And this double dip is for Tanya. It's for you, girl. Hey, hey. Triple dip. <laughs> and. Mmm. Mmm. really good my husband's over there on his game with his son so sorry if you hear him talking or, or background noise I can't help it guys also I'm using a nasty I mean it's clean trust me it's clean but it's not very pretty I don't use my nice kitchen towels for my videos because I don't want to stain them you know and that was delicious hmm Mm. So good. Mm -hmm. I have story time today, um, but first, um, I don't remember my life. The only thing I remember is taking two shots. That's it. After the second shot, I, I, I checked out. I wasn't there. I don't know what the heck happened. So I'm sorry, you guys. Please don't hold it against me. Mango habanero. Yeah, the next morning I uh, panicked. I like ran for my phone, pulled up my YouTube, and I was like, no, it's still up. I was supposed to delete it. I, before I went to bed, I was supposed to take it down, and I was so drunk that I, I forgot. So yeah, that was like up there forever. <laughs> I was so upset. Mm. <laughs> My husband's looking at me. He can't really hear me though because he has his um, headphones on. I haven't had Wingstop in a long time. <clears throat> While I was doing my live, my mother called me, my brother called me. They were like, I didn't answer, of course, because I guess when you go live, because it was on my phone, it, there's no phone calls that come through. I don't know, but I didn't get them until after the next morning. But they were calling me to say, get your drunk ass off YouTube. Are you crazy right now? <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, I am. Uh-huh. Some people were like, I'm unsubscribing. This is such trash. 
Well, no shit. I wouldn't. I don't blame you. I would unsubscribe. <laughs> you guys, I might have some content put up. God only knows. And you might want to unsubscribe. So I don't know. But I think I had fun. I don't remember. <laughs> oh my god, so embarrassing. Yep. I remember taking the first shot. I remember talking to you guys for a minute. Now I took another shot. Everything that happened after that in that video, that wasn't me. <laughs> My evil twin sister comes out when I'm drunk. Mm. Okay. Very highly anticipated story time for you guys. <sighs> Continuant story time of how me and my ex parted and finally divorced. Yeah. Oh, there's blue cheese. I forgot I had that. I'm not sure if I like their honey mustard. I'm about to find out. A bite's for you guys. Take a bite. Oh. One of my son's friends <clears throat> came in the door, rang the doorbell. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Uh, the Louisiana, Louisiana rubs a little spicy. It's, it's good though. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. Okay, I had I had my sixth kid. This is a story time, people. So. If you want to uh, make yourself look like an ass and say, oh, you talk too much in the comments, well, I warned you and I told you. So go ahead and make yourself look like an ass. You're not going to want to watch this video just for the food. It's going to be a conversation too. Okay, I had my tubes tied after my sixth baby. Um, we were living in Keller, Texas at the time. Um, the business that my ex-husband at the time was working was a member of the trucking business. Yeah, so he was re doing really well, thriving um, with that business. These are the voodoo fries. They have cheese and ranch all over them, but I need more. Mmm. We ended up moving. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and tell this as fast as I can because this is a five year period, everyone. Because when we divorced, my youngest Brooklyn was five years old. So yeah, excuse me. It took that long for us to divorce, sadly to say. So um, <clears throat> he was making great money. Um, we were doing financially very well, and he came up to me one day and he said, "Hey." Um, I've been looking at houses and uh, like to buy. And I was like, what, really? He goes, yeah. <laughs> I don't wanna constantly keep saying how good it is, but it is. So he um, asked me if I wanna buy a house and I said, heck yes, I wanna buy a house. So we were looking at houses and we bought our first home together. <laughs> And the house we were living in, in Keller, we were renting, of course. So we uh, kept looking and we found a house, beautiful home. It was a uh, four bedroom, three bath, two, and two car garage. It had a, a nice, beautiful pool with a big tree house and a, a pool house in the back. Yeah, that's a really nice house for a first time buyer, especially when you're a young couple with a lot of kids. 
So we found that house, we applied for it, we got approved. I was so happy, I was elated. So we moved from Keller, Texas to um, Irving, Texas. That's where we bought our house, Irving, Texas. Let me try it with the blue cheese. We moved in um, shortly, you know, after we got approved, we moved in. Mm. He had turned his, uh, our pool house that we had with that house that came with it, he had turned that into his office for the trucking company business. Mm -hmm. So from the time he got up to the time he went to bed, guess where he was in that pool house? Office, whatever you want to call it. At this time, he was not like treating me bad or calling me names or putting me down. No, because you know why? He was 24 7, 365 in that pool house working. So, I don't know, I was just there. I was just there, like raising my kids, you know. We were together, but we weren't. I was never around him. He was never in the house with me and the kids. Never had anything to do with us. Just work, 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 work. Stop it! <laughs> you guys, my husband's right there looking at me. He's making faces at me and he's doing dirty stuff. And you went sexual things that stop. <laughs> I was doing sexual references was. I'm telling, I'm telling YouTube on you. He's right there, guys. Go get him. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna try this one in the blue cheese. So I was just basically, you know, raising my kids by myself. That's exactly what I was doing. Cause, yeah. He had nothing to do with us, nothing. Only time he came in the house was to go to the bathroom or to eat, and it lasted five minutes. And you go back out. Mm. Are you kidding me right now? That was a disaster. Oh, that one was spicy. That's really good. It's really hard to eat good food and tell a story, you guys. Please bear with me. Okay, we ended up living in that house for two years. We just purchased it, just bought it, and two years, and, and we were out. Because, you know, how the, the business was thriving, and he was making so much money, and, you know, Basically, I mean, he was running the whole uh, company. Oh, look at that. Mm hmm. Really good. A year passed, and that's how we lived our lives. Didn't really, you know, nothing to do with me and the kids. Just working. I mean, I was very grateful, you know. He was paying the bills. I mean, I couldn't work. I had six kids, you know what I mean? Six little kids at home. How the hell is that going to work? No, it was impossible. And so, you know, I was very thankful and blessed that he was paying all the bills, you know, because I, I didn't have an income, so. But still, at the same time, like, I became... I started to become very bitter and I started to become very um, 
hating life. You know what I mean? Like I just, like the whole year passed, he just ignores me, walks by me, doesn't really say anything, you know? And I became so, excuse me, I became so bitter. It was eating me up inside because I'm sitting here thinking, how can this motherfucker, excuse my language, tr you know what he did to me? You guys know what he did to me. I told you in story times. How can he do this to me? And then, and then do this to me. This is like almost just to say, just as bad. Like, you know what I mean? He's just like, no, nothing to do with you. And really nothing to do with his kids ever. Never. So the bitterness and the anger were starting to eat me alive. To where... I hated my life. I hated it. <clears throat> I had a husband that didn't want anything to do with me unless, he, you know, he needed to get him uh, self taken care of. That's the only time he had something to do with me. That was it. And then, uh, you know, the rest of the time, the rest of the 90% of the time. Nope. Walk by me like I was nothing. Never kissed me, never hugged me, you know, nothing. Nope, not even his own children. Mm-hmm, it's really good. So I became to take it out on people around me. <clears throat> I began, I began, became, oh my God, I can't talk, a short patient with the kids, very short patient with him. I also found like a new self-respect for myself because I knew in my mind that there's no way this bitch can tie me down, not one more time. My tubes are tied. Um, I'm regaining a new self, like, confidence that I never had before. Like, you know what? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm never going to have baby fat again on me. I'm looking good, you know. Um, yeah, I can never get pregnant again and be in that vulnerable state, you know. It's it's terrible. When you're with somebody that, that really treats you right and you guys are madly in love with each other, it's a beautiful thing. Pregnancy is a beautiful thing. But it was ruined for me because of that monster I was with. So, but I knew that could never happen to me again. He could never tie me down and get me pregnant. So I was becoming a little more stronger, you know what I mean? Like, getting to where I'm, you know, I'm, fuck you, bitch, fuck you. You know, when he pissed me off or something? Yeah, before I'd be like, <laughs> cowering down, because I was pregnant, you know, I was trapped. I felt very trapped and I had nowhere to go. So, mm -mm. when he would make me mad or something, and it didn't take much because I, I began to start, I, it went from loving this man to absolutely hating him. Um, the bitterness, the anger, and then, then the hatred started coming in because after all he put me through, after everything he did to me, he's just going to treat me like this after the fact, you know, it's like. It's like taking a knife to a, a scabbed over wound you have. It's that that's just what it's like. I was like, Jesus, I'm trying to heal. Can you leave me alone? You know what I mean? I'm trying to heal from my past and you're still trying to fuck with me. Sorry for the language. I get very passionate when I talk about this crap. So I realized that I did not like myself. I was not happy. And <clears throat> I wasn't a happy mother, you know what I mean? I love my children, they got me through it, trust me. If it wasn't for them, mentally and emotionally, I would have been way worse off. So my children definitely pulled me out of the darkest holes at some, time, at some points. But I just, <sighs> So after a year, um, he came up to me. This was this is our whole year of how we lived. And he said, um, 
Oh well, you know the business is is going okay, but it's it was it's not going as like as good as it was back um, in Keller. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I don't know. We're kind of slowing down. He goes, but I've been looking online for you know different jobs and stuff. <laughs> and I was like, really? He goes, yeah. Hmm. So that was about a year after we moved into the house. And then like, I was like, okay, so another, a few months went by and you know, it was the same kind of thing. He would say, well, well, we're not that bad, but we're still not as good as we were. And you know, I can see that this is not really gonna go anywhere or do anything like I hoped it would. And this is, I have one good thing to say about that monster piece of shit I was married to. One good thing to say. That man knew how to make money. He never missed work. He could have been as sick as a dog and he'd still get up and go to work. He was a go-getter when it comes to supporting his family and making money. That's one good thing I would say about him. He was a fantastic provider, fantastic. He was a terrible piece of shit husband and a terrible piece of shit father. So yeah, good with the bad, I guess, but no thanks. Hell no. I'd rather be poor as hell and have real true love and someone who treats you right any day of the fucking week. I don't want to cuss. I already feel bad about my drunk life. I don't want to cuss. He makes me cuss. <clears throat> yeah, that's miserable, guys. Money does not make you happy. Money will, I don't care if you say, oh, I'm in the most miserable position in my life, or I, I'm like, you know, if I just had money, I'd be happy. No, you wouldn't, trust me. because he made good money back then, but okay, continuing on. So another, uh, I'd say f four to six months went by. So a year and a half we've been in that house, right? And he says, um, yeah, I'm definitely looking for another job. The trucking company is totally slowing down and our, our, the, my pay has gone down a lot. He goes, this is not happening. So I'm looking for another job. And I said, okay, um, Oh, all right, where? And he goes, um, I'm going to go back to welding. Because remember, when I first got with him, he was a welder. And then they went to the trucking. You know. I said, okay. I really didn't have you know much to say. I was like, all right. <clears throat> so then like the next couple of days, he came up to me and he said, I found a job. I said, you did? He goes, you wouldn't even believe it. I said, what? He said, they already offered me the job and they told me if I can come up here right now and pass the welding test, I'm hired. It was $2,500 a week. What? $2,500 a week for this welding job. And they said, you already have the job if you can pass the test. So he was an excellent welder, excellent welder. So he said, well, there's, there's good news and bad news to it though. And I said, what? He goes, I already told you the good news, $2,500 a week. Here's the bad news. <laughs> I said, what? He goes, it's in Wyoming. What? <laughs> Wyoming. We're in Texas, so. I said, how's that bad news? I love the mountains. I love living up north. I, I Heck yes. I'm excited. I was so excited. Texas is so hot, you guys. It's miserable. I just, I, I can't, I can't stand 
hot, hot places where you can't even go outside during the summer or do anything because it's too damn hot. That's why I want to I wanna move to the mountains someday. Final resting place. Okay, anyways. So he's like, are you serious? You're, you're okay with it? Oh, shit. I said, yes, absolutely. I said, let's go. I'm ready. I was, I was ready for a change. Even though it wasn't really like a physical change, no. I was needing a check engine light change, like, honey, you know, you take care of your shit. But I didn't know that at the time. I thought, oh, maybe if, you know, we go into a different state, maybe if he gets this job, we're going to be happy again. You know, whatever. <laughs> In a race, a really... In a relationship like that, you always hope for the best. You always look forward to um, like certain things to maybe change your situation, to, make, to maybe make yourself and your husband or boyfriend, whatever, happier. Or if this happens, we'll be, you know, we'll finally fall in love again or something like that. Sorry, guys. It doesn't work that way. Everybody wants it to, but it doesn't. It only gets worse. <laughs> Sad to say. We sold our house. We packed it up. I'm trying to hurry up here. Oh, before that, I'm sorry. Um, he took off. My brother went with him because he said, I have a brother-in-law who also, you know, is in construction. Do you mind if he can test too? And I'll bring him. And they said, yeah, more the merrier. This was Wyoming. And the reason why it paid so well was because their winters there are absolutely almost unbearable unbearable for humans man nor beast actually it gets 30 and 40 below there but and they still have to work in those conditions so that's why the pay was so amazing because nobody wanted to do it they couldn't hire anybody desperate people <laughs> with big families yeah yeah sign me up so um him and my brother left they packed their stuff they went for a week to go down there and test and, you know, see if they could pass a test. And so they went down there. They both took the test. They both passed with flying colors, both of them. I do that before I wipe my face because I don't want to waste this stuff. It breaks my heart to wipe it on the towel. I want to lick it. Okay, so we packed up the house. They stayed there, of course. They weren't gonna like, you know. <clears throat> so um, he he said, hey, um, I have to stay here. I, I, I'm starting work like tomorrow. They already hired me and everything's good. And I'm like, me and the kids are here. Like, we have this house. Well, what the hell are we supposed to do? He's like, uh, grab your mom and dad. Um, have them help you pack up the house with the kids. Um, the house was already sold. There, We already had a buyer for it. And um, he's like, I don't know. You all come up here together. Be careful. And I'm sorry I can't be there to help you. Yeah, he did. I asked them, you know, I mean, that's outrageous, but I asked them and they said, of course, they would, they would be willing to move to Wyoming as well. And, um, they even offered my dad a job. They were just wanting, it didn't matter, you know, who was on board. Come on down, take the test. You're hired. So they offered my dad a great job too. So me, my mom, my dad, and the kids packed up the house. Got a U-Haul, uh, a couple of them, I think. Yeah. And we headed off, took off down the road. Moved there and um, my, well, first, when we first moved there, we had to get a, like a weekly place because, you know, we didn't have a house.
Mm. We stayed in this weekly place. All of us. My brother, me and him, my mom and dad, the kids, for six weeks. Six weeks, because you know, they hold two weeks back of pay when you start a new job. So he wasn't getting the money yet. It um, took two weeks for that. But then we had to actually, you know, find a house. Like, you can't just find a house in one day, you know what I mean? So we were looking and... Yeah, six weeks we were all crammed in this little um, weekly place. It was terrible. So we finally found a house and um, we applied for it and we got approved. Okay, so we were living in, in our house that we bought in Irving for two years. Moved from there and we moved to Wyoming and we lived there for three years until him and I finally divorced. We ended up, I gotta speed this up. We ended up moving into a over half a million dollar home. It was a $750,000 home. Um, it had six bedrooms, it had five um, bathrooms, it had a um, <clears throat> two story course, three car garage, um, it had a, a workout gym inside, it had a studio, a recording studio inside of it as well. And it was a wraparound um, port deck, porch, whatever. Upper portion was a whole wraparound the house. It was the most amazing house I've ever seen in my life. It was celebrity status style. We moved in that house. It was so difficult to find a house at that time for some reason. We couldn't find one. Finally, we found that one, and even though it was so expensive, and we weren't, we were, we were purchasing. I mean, leasing to buy, leasing with the option to buy. That's what we did. <clears throat> what? With his freaking income, I mean, we got approved in two seconds. My parents and my brother moved in with us, so me and him had like the the downstairs corridor of the house to ourselves with our little family and then upstairs um there was three bedrooms down three bedrooms up and then it was like it was almost like two separate houses it was just that amazing this house really was so we decided to all like just move in together because it was so huge no one would be, be like breathing down each other's necks no it was that big and plus i needed help with the kids you know he was going to be working uh seven twelves like that is seven days a week, 12 hour days. <sighs> you do the math on the money on that. Hmm. $2,500 a week, seven twelfths. That's how much money we're making. <clears throat> Life was grand. Life was beautiful. I had my parents there. I had somebody to talk to, somebody to make me feel alive, you know what I mean? I wasn't le ignored, left alone. Um, the kids, they loved my parents, you know, so they were happy. I was happy. And yeah, it was a win-win for everybody, you know? <laughs> I was fine, like, just with my parents there. Even though I was still heartbroken and sad with, in my, within my marriage. They made it easier living there, you know? My nose is running from the spiciness. Okay, so we lived in that house for three years in Wyoming. All of us in that same house. Sorry, my dog is barking. Remember the story time you guys I told you about um, my camping story time? We went camping for six weeks. 
my parents kept the kids. They would bring them up there every couple or every few days to hang out and see us. And then they'd take them back, right? Remember the hilarious uh, camping story? Yeah. That happened shortly. That happened in Wyoming. Like, you know. Like, that was the last thing that happened before we divorced. He would come home from work. I'd get up every morning at four o'clock to go make his lunch. You know, I, I would do, try and do what I could because he was working his ass off, paying these bills and like giving us this mansion of a house to live in. Well, of course, my parents, they were absolutely paying a big chunk. So was my brother. We were all splitting. Mm-hmm. So he'd come home from work. You know, I, I'd get up and make his lunches, and then he'd, you know, go leave for work, and he'd come home from work. And, <clears throat> I mean, I get it, 7-12s, that is like, that's like <laughs> doctor's hours. It's terrible, especially in Wyoming. Brutal weather and everything. So I had a lot more patience with his attitude and the way he was ignoring me all the time and whatever, because how hard he was working, so... I noticed when I get up at four to make his lunches and he'd come home from, from work, um, he would throw his, uh, you know, like lunch bag, whatever you call it on the, on the kitchen Island and he'd walk away, go take a shower. So I'd go over there every day and I'd get his lunch bag and I'd clean it, wash it out, whatever for the next day. Well, I've been noticing the past few days that his lunch was untouched, untouched, wasn't touching it. I asked him, I said, how come you're not eating lunch, your lunches? Like, what's the deal? He's like, oh, I'm just exhausted and I, I, I have no appetite. Really? I would make sure dinner was hot and ready every day he got home. These are the things I did every single day. He come home, wouldn't touch dinner, had his lunch still untouched and he go right to drinking and going laying in the bed and watching TV this is what you do every night he dropped weight he was like like really getting like skinny and I'm thinking what is going on he's just exhausted he's just freaking exhausted I don't know you guys he was you know doing that drug thing back in the day but I don't think he was doing it then. I don't know. But I just find it weird that he wouldn't eat wouldn't eat his lunches or dinners anymore and he just went to drinking. So they gave their employees a break. They would work seven twelves for like three weeks and then they get two weeks off to go um you know only working, I think it was eight fives. Mm -hmm. Because no human being can work those rigorous hours like that. It's impossible. So during that break that he got, he's like, hey, let's go camping. So he, w he was starting to get like, out of control uh, anger, like spurts. Look at that. He would start yelling at me and the kids for no reason, like psycho yelling. Like it would wake up the whole house kind of thing. And one night we're in the bedroom arguing and he was drunk, right? And I had his plate of food and I put his plate of food on the nightstand and I said, you are not eating anything I cook you. You're not eating your lunches. I get up at four every day to make your lunch. You refuse to eat it. Why am I even doing this? Why am I wasting, why are we, you wasting food? And then I have his dinners ready and he wasn't touching them. 
so I said, I'm sick of it. And I threw his, not threw, I placed his uh, dinner plate on the nightstand right where he was laying on the bed. I was walking away, right, just to leave the room, like leave his drunk ass on the bed. Just care, I don't want to be around him. He picked up that plate, threw the food off of it, dumped it off, and then chucked it at me like a flying saucer, like a Frisbee, like super hard though. It was a glass hard plate. <clears throat> And I heard him do this before I knew what he was doing. So when I heard him, I turn around and I see this thing flying towards my face. And I go like this. As soon as I went like that, it goes right. I could feel the wind. It went right by my my face and it hit the wall. And when it hit the wall, it left an indention in the wall that big. If that would have hit me in the head, it probably would have killed me. Who knows? I was in shock. I couldn't, and he was cussing me out and calling me like a, the C word and the B word and like all this, uh, the H word, the S word, whore, slut, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, did you just throw that plate at my head? Do you see what it did to the freaking wall? Can you imagine what that would have done to my head? And he's still like cussing me out, calling me horrible names. And so I stormed out of there. And that was like just that was one of the biggest like fights we had there, cause I had mostly working. So time goes by. That was just that was the only big fight we had there, but the argument lasted longer and it had more details in it. But the video is too long already. But again, I was you know lonely by myself. He was working all the time. So, he came up to me one day, and uh, he said that he met this guy. And I said, oh, really? And he goes, yeah, his name is so-and-so, and he's a really cool dude, and he's been telling me a lot about the end times and, like, uh, the, uh, the apocalypse that's coming and the end of the world. And I was like, oh, really? And he goes, yeah. He goes, and, and we're, like, we're buying stuff together, preparing for this. I said, what do you mean you're buying stuff together? What? I have to make this long story really short. So the whole time we're living in this house, this is just how our, our you know marriage was. Nothing to do with me. Still calling me horrible names and, and yelling at me, you know, ever so often. But working his ass off, hardly ever saw him. It was just our marriage was poisoned, you know, from the very beginning, and it just got worse. You know what I'm talking about? So he kept telling me about this guy he met, um, yeah, and that he was gonna uh, buy this and that with him, purchase this and this because the end of the end of days are coming. <laughs> I was like hearing about this guy for like a few weeks. It's all he talked about, and this guy was married with a daughter. You guys want to know how we finally got divorced? You're, you're not even going to believe it. He came up to me one day and he said, um, you need to tell your mother and your dad and your brother that um, I'm not paying the rent here anymore and um, I'm at, we're actually moving out and we're going to move in with my friend so-and-so and that they need to um, you know, get their own houses, their own places, whatever. And he said, I already called the owners of the house and told them that we're no longer, you know, I'm going to pay the reletting fee to get out of the uh, lease. And we're just, we're going to, we're leaving. This was right after we went camping, you guys, for the six weeks. Literally right after. Like within the next few days. I said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about we're leaving? And we're, we're not living here anymore. He goes... We're going to live in so-and-so's basement. He has a basement. Me and him pitched in, um, and we're buying a compound. And we have a bunch of guns and ammo. We got um, tons of canned goods and waters and first aid kits. He was going totally off his damn rocker. And I'm like, what are you talking 
about? You're scaring me. Oh my God, he, he just went on, went on and went on saying he was gonna do this and do that and they got this and got that. And I was like, who is this dude? I don't, I only heard about him a few times and you're like acting like he, oh God, he's your best friend or something. I said, he's like, yeah, we're living. I said, I'm not living in a fucking basement. Are you said, are you kidding me right now? You expect me to take six kids in someone else's basement and live that way for weeks or months or whatever, however long? He goes, well, that's what it's gonna take, it's gonna take. I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Mm -mm. I'm not doing it. I said, after everything you put me through, after how you treat me, you think I'm gonna fucking live in a basement with my children? What kind of a woman do you think I am? Not happening. He looked me dead in the face and said, if you don't come and live with me in this basement, then I'm filing for a divorce tomorrow. That's what he said. I started laughing. That's exactly what I did. I took a couple steps back and I just started laughing. And I was like, you gotta be shitting me right now. You're gonna divorce me over not wanting to move into a basement with my kids? He said, yeah. I said, well, I said, screw you. I'm not. Go file for divorce. I'm not doing it. He left the house. Got, a, got our hotel room that night. Not the next day, but the very next day. The doorbell rang. My three little ones, Mia, Gavin, and Brooklyn, every time the doorbell rang, they would, you know how little kids do that? They love to see who's at the door. They ran up to the door and I was like, no, 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 I'll get it, I'll get it. It was the constable serving me divorce papers. <laughs> I'm not even making this shit up. I'm not. I I looked at those papers and I was just like, is this motherfucker for real? Like, I, I was staring at papers like in absolute utter shock. Like I, I, I was looking at them, but they weren't really there kind of feeling. And I was just like, So I said, okay, I, I'm just like, I started laughing, like chuckling to myself and I was just like, okay, to myself, you know? And I went and I called my mom and I showed her, I said, he just served me divorce papers. We have been uh, married for 13 years at this point, six kids. We were together uh, for 20 years, 20 or 25 years together, but married for 13. And divorce papers over because I wouldn't move into a basement with him until so the compound could be built. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm telling the truth. Okay, so my son's leaving. Yeah, so that that's that's what it was. That is exactly what it was. That's how we divorced. Um, my mom took me the next day. She, she's like, oh, hell no. This, this is not. She became enraged. She's like, oh, he's not doing this to you. We went to the attorney the next day. I walked in the attorney's office. And um, he's like, hi, how can I help you? I sat down. I said, yes, I need to file for divorce, please. And he goes, okay, yes, absolutely. He goes, I'm sorry to hear that. I said, I'm not. Or I was pissed. Pissed, 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 so pissed at this point, like boiling of blood with anger. I'm like, I'm not, motherfucker. Let me, give me some papers to sign. I'll sign it right now. <clears throat> so he's like, okay, can I get your name, please? And I gave him my name and he goes, um, he looked at me and he goes, can I get your husband's name? And I gave him my husband, husband's name and he goes, huh. He sat back in his chair and he started like clicking his pen like this, you know, and he's just looking at me. I was like, I was looking at my mom like, he goes, um, your husband already came in here and hired me. I'm already working for him. <laughs> what? As if it couldn't get better or worse or whatever, whatever you want to say. Yeah. The highest paid, best attorney in that town. My husband already filed paperwork with him. I stood up. 
I said, well, isn't this comical? I said, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I said, I guess I'll be seeing you. <laughs> guess I'll be seeing your face around. He's like, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm like, uh-huh. Walked out. I was so mad. And um, then I called him. And I said, oh, guess where I just came from? He's like, where? I said, I just came from your attorney's office trying to, fi trying to file divorce papers myself. And I got your papers um, yesterday, and then I happened to just walk into your attorney's office. He goes, Kristen, I told you I'm serious about this, and um, it's already too late. Even if you said you're, you agree to it and you're going to do this with me, it's already too late. I already made it in my mind. Uh -huh. I didn't divorce him, people. He divorced me. Even after all that man put me through. <laughs> Divorces me over a basement. Oh my god. Mmm. So, we, I go back home, me and my mom, and we're like, we need to get out of here. He told me that the people said we have um, 60 days to get out. Because he already paid the real fee, we're supposed to be out. So he called me, he's like, I already paid the relenting fee. Um, um, and they're giving us all 60 days to get our shit and find somewhere else and leave. I said, I'm, I already know this, I'm already on it. I said, you know what, screw you, fuck you. I was like cussing him out, screaming and yelling at him. Or slamming the phone down. <clears throat> and me and my mom and my dad and my brother, we started packing up the house because guess what? We already found a house. <laughs> it was that quick. Cause uh, yeah, we went back to Texas. I'm gonna stay in Wyoming with that <laughs> freaking <sighs> psychopath. Oh, he stayed there, of course. He's making buku bucks living with his end of the world friend. And they're gonna have a compound. Yeah. So me and my mom and my dad and my brother, we packed up the house. Um, we already had a house waiting for us in um, Keller, Keller, Texas. We went back to Keller, Texas. Started in Keller, went to Irving, Wyoming, back to Keller. It didn't take us long. It took us like maybe a couple weeks and we are completely out of that house. We sold everything. Um, that travel trailer that I told you guys we went camping with, me and my husband bought together. He told me, I don't want anything. I just want you out. Just, just take everything. Take it all. I don't care. Yeah, he didn't fight me on any property or anything. We didn't have property, but I mean like, you know, <clears throat> our vehicles, our furniture, um, that travel trailer, you know, he said you can have it all. So I basically sold everything because I needed traveling money, I needed moving money, I needed money for a house when I get there. So yeah, we sold everything but what we absolutely needed to take and have. Went to Texas, moved into our new house. Uh, my brother, you know, went off, did his thing. But I moved in with my parents because, you know, where was I gonna go? So me and my parents got a house together. And yeah, that was it, guys. That was it. That's how our divorce happened. After everything, that's how we divorced. Then it was about, I would say, a month. A month went by of us living, I'm getting so full, of us living in, back in Texas in Keller. He calls me crying, you guys, crying. I'll never forget it. I was laying on the couch. I got a phone call and it was him. And I answered the phone call and he was crying. Please come back to me. Please come back to me. You gotta be shitting me right now. <sighs> Mm. 
My last one is I can't eat no more. I almost. Oh god. Where's the um? These were really good. That was my last one. Yeah, and I I didn't laugh or I wasn't ugly. Not at all. I said, you know what? I said, you don't even know how long, how long I've been waiting to hear those words from you. How long I've been waiting to feel this from you. You don't even know. In fact, the last time that you did this was when you cheated on me when I was pregnant with our daughter. And old almost made me do something very stupid. That was the last time he called me like that. And and he goes, oh, so so you're coming back? He goes, if I have to, I will come down right now just to pick you up and the kids, and then we'll drive back. We'll drive back right now. He goes, we don't have to live with with that guy. And I, I'm sorry that I even gave you that ultimatum. I'm sorry. I'm a foolish man or whatever, I, I'm stupid, but I can't live without you and the kids. That was the last straw, you guys. Normally, like in the past, I'd be like, okay. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, some I something came over me throughout the years with, you know, just the treatment that I was receiving and just to know that I don't deserve this. I do not deserve this. And I refuse to put up with it for another second. So I know he divorced me and I know that that's what pushed me to actually escape from him. But you know what? Sometimes it's the smallest things that make you do, make you make the biggest decisions. I don't know. You can, you can say I divorced him or he, you can say he divorced me however you want to say it, but he begged me back in tears and I said, I will never, ever go back to you. I'm sorry. I deserve happiness. These kids deserve happiness. And if it's not going to be just totally ha come within being by myself, then it's going to be with some other person. But I know that my happiness will never come as long as I'm with you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm still going through with this divorce, even though you divorced me. I'm, I'm, no, don't ever call me again. And that's it. Unless it has something to do with the kids, I don't want to talk to you. Hung up the phone. He called me over and over and over again, left in, uh, texting me, calling me, you know, just, oh my God. Uh -huh. Well, finally he snapped because I ignored him and I wouldn't have anything to do with him. After he heard that I was dating or seeing someone through the grapevine. He heard. I was hanging out with people. You know, I was going out drinking. Um, going out to dinners, movies, you know. I was actually having a life. You know what I mean? I've never had a life before. I was always stuck in the house. So, yeah. Whatever. You wanna, I don't know. I was not in a relationship. But he somehow thought I was with somebody. I was just a free bird and I was doing things to make myself happy and I was doing things to have fun in life, you know, that I didn't have before. But he heard that I was dating someone, so he went crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's how we divorced and we finally got away from each other, but throughout the years, we divorced in uh, 2010. Um, my daughter was five, my youngest child was five. And um, from 2010 to about a year ago, he still calls and tries to get me back and sends me inappropriate messages and text messages and whatever. <laughs> Mojave's flexing over there. Show me your guns, son. <laughs> Anyways, I'm super full and this is like, oh God, it was delicious. Thank you guys for choosing Wingstop because I was craving wings. Oh God, I can't breathe now. Look at that. I ate almost all those. I ate a ton of these and some of those. Yeah, and my hair is disgustingly dirty. I'm getting it dyed. That's why it's not washed. <sighs> okay, yeah, so...
Yeah, up until just like a year ago. Yeah, he was trying, he's still trying to get me back. <laughs> oh, that's a whole other story time, people. Oh my God. I forwarded every inappropriate, disgusting, sexual text message. And uh, I recorded voicemails and I sent everything to her. She knows. She knows about it. We talked on the phone about it and she said she, she's still with him. She's still with him. She puts up with it. But yeah, she said she wanted to smother him with a pillow when she saw those messages that I forwarded to her. I said, yeah. She, and she's like, I'm confused. Well, why didn't you uh, take the opportunity to get back with him? I said, he makes my skin crawl. I wouldn't be with him if he was the last person on earth. Male or female? <laughs> nope. Sorry. She was a little shocked. She's like, what? Whatever. No. You can take your once a cheater piece of shit. Always a cheater piece of shit. So true. Okay, you guys. Yeah. That's pretty crazy, right? That's insane that that's what we divorced over. <laughs> oh my God. It just blows my mind when I start to think about it. But thank God it did. You know what? God works in mysterious ways, people. <laughs> and it just took him uh, giving me an ultimatum about moving into a basement with my children to finally make me get away from him. Mm -hmm. That's all it took. Forget the... <laughs> what I went through. Ugh, it didn't even take... I mean... You know what I'm trying to say? Like, that was so horrible and dramatic. Or traumatic. Not dramatic. Traumatic. And it, that didn't even move me to leave him. It was just that little simple thing. I'm like, I'm done. Okay, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, on my next video, I have a... Um, oh, it's going to be this weekend. Yes, I'm not going to tell you what, though. Okay, I love you guys. See you in the next video. Bye!